You can think of data structures like this picture of a house. In this house, I have a roof, I have windows, I have the actual bricks or the walls, I have a door. And when we think of a house, we think of a single object. So if I was going to move uh, this house, I might be able to grab a bit of it and drag it and move it somewhere else. Okay? And it moves as one object. The windows, the doors, uh, the roof, they're all attached. If we didn't have this in a single structure, all the different parts would be separate. In this case, if I wanted to move part of it, uh, I would have to move each separate individual part and make sure that they were all kept or put back together in the right places, which is okay, but, but sort of a bit of a pain. It's certainly not as easy as grabbing the whole thing and moving it together in one go. So data structures are like this picture of a house where all the different parts are grouped together because data structures, they store related data in a structured and organized way within a single object. We've already come across one type of data structure and that was a list or an array. Arrays are data structures that store multiple items inside one sort of collected object that spans several blocks in memory, each one after the other. Um, now, technically, an array would be of a fixed size. So this one would have five elements, and that would be it, set forever. Five elements. And we can put data into those elements. So let's, for example, put in names of people. We can refer to each of the um, bits of data in this array by um, its index number. So each slot, each of these little slots, will have a different index number. And t traditionally, in most programming languages, those index numbers start at zero. So this would be uh, John is in zero, Bob is in one, Claire is in two, Jessica is in 3, Andy is in 4. And ordinarily, we would assign this array to a variable so that it can be referred to. So maybe we would call this uh, my friends. And I could say that my friends is equal to that list or that array of data. And if I wanted to access any particular item from inside there, let's say, for example, I wanted to access... Uh, the value Claire, then I could do that by referring to it as friends, because that's the name of the structure, square brackets, and index number two. So, for example, if I wanted to print it out, I could go print brackets friends square brackets two. And that would output to my screen, Claire. Okay, and that's an example using Python syntax. So, arrays, they store multiple items of data. Um, each item of data is stored its own element. And each element has its own index number. And crucially, arrays are of a fixed size. Now, technically, in Python... We don't have arrays, instead they have something called lists, which are really, really like arrays, but they are not of a fixed size. So let's now look at um, some of the key syntax and the key operations that we can use um, with arrays and lists in Python. So let's start off uh, with uh, creating a new array or new list, we're in Python, um, that is going to represent our friends. So we're going to declare the variable friends, make it equal to our list. And to do that, we use square brackets. And we've got a choice here. We could just do open square brackets and close square brackets. And that will create a completely empty list called friends. Or we can start our list off with a few items already in there by having square brackets open 
and then putting your first few elements in. So element John, and then we use a comma between each one, and then let's do another one, Bob. Let's do another one, Claire. And finally, let's do Jessica. And when we're finished, we can use square brackets and that will close our list and we press enter and we have now declared a list called friends. Notice that I'm in the Python idle, the interactive shell, where when I type something and press enter, it immediately executes it rather than writing a line by line code um, in uh, a new window. So just to prove that this is here, let's have a look at friends by typing friends, pressing enter and Python returns our list. Uh, now let's say I want to add a new friend, I want to add Andy on the end. To do that, I use the dot append method and then because it's a method which is like a function that belongs to an object, um, I have to use uh, brackets to enter my arguments and the argument I'm going to provide is the the new piece of data that I wish to append. So I want to append Andy, close brackets, press enter, and now if we look at friends, John, Bob, Claire, Jessica, Andy, with Andy written on the end. So that's how we append items to a list. Now let's look at how we can get items out of the list. Remember that I said earlier that um, each of these items has their own various different index numbers starting at 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Well, in order to get an item from the list, all we need to do is use the name of the list, friends, and then in square brackets put the index number that we want. So let's say we wanted Jessica, then we should be able to get that by entering friends, square bracket, three, close square brackets, enter. And that returns the fourth item in the list. And I can use this um, in any way I'd like to. So I could assign this to a variable. So I could say chosen friend, oops, equals friends three. Now if I did something like print, uh, my chosen friend is and then chosen friend it should print out Jessica my chosen friend is Jessica and indeed it does now let's say that we want to remove an item from a list let's pretend that we wanted to remove uh, Bob so Bob's in index 1 so to remove Bob from our list, we can use friends, which is the name of the list, and the remove method, and in brackets, all we need to do is enter the value we want to remove. I want to remove Bob. Press enter, and if we now look at the value of friends again, no longer is Bob there. And actually, all the index numbers will have changed now. So whereas before, friends3 was Jessica, if we look at that now, friends 3 should now be Andy. And indeed it is, because now friends 2 is going to be Jessica, because Bob has vacated the list, which means that everybody else has shunted up one position. Let's imagine now that we wanted to update one of the values in our lists. So let's say that... Um, Instead of the third item being Jessica, we wanted to make that third item something else, maybe, a, well, a different name, maybe Sarah. So to do that, all we need to do is we can refer to any item, remember, in the list by using square brackets and the index number. So square brackets 2 was Jessica. So if I now say, well, okay, I'm going to change that. Friends 2 is going to be equal to Sarah. Oops. Press enter. And now if we look at friends, Jessica has been replaced with Sarah. 
and Jessica is no more. Poor Jessica. Often, we want to do something with all of the items in a list. For example, we might want to print out uh, every item in the list, or if these items were numbers, we might want to do some maths on them, like uh, multiply them by a number or something like that. And to do that, we can use iteration. And in particular, we would use a for loop, which is a form of definite iteration. So remember your for loop syntax. It starts with the word for, and then you need... Um, a variable of some kind, so I'm going to just say maybe variable f, I'm going to call it f, for f in, and now we can just put the name of the list. So for f in friends, colon, this means that whatever I write now is going to happen for every one of the items in the friends list, and I get to refer to that item by using the variable f. So for every uh, item in my friends list, I'm going to print I am friends with F. Bearing in mind, again, that F is this F, and this F gets its value from the friends list. So every single time the loop goes round, that value of F, the first time would be John, then it will be Claire, the next time it will be Sarah, and the last time it will be Andy. So let's see what happens when we run this for loop. And there you go. You can see how we've used all of the items in our list and our for loop has gone over each one and printed them out in the order that they appear in the list. Sometimes it's really uh, necessary to test if an item is in a list. So we may use a, an if statement and we might want to find out if, uh, yeah, if an item is there or not. Uh, maybe this will be a game, and uh, the items in the list are the weapons that a character has, and we want to test if a certain weapon is in the possession of a character. Uh, to do this, we can use the in keyword. So um, in its simplest sense, I can say John in friends, and this should return the value true, and it does. Um, using this in an if statement is a little bit different. All we would have to do is something like if John in friends print are good, John is there. And we know that this is going to be true, so when we run this, it should say are good, John is there. However, if we uh, use a name that isn't there, we can make a different outcome come. So we can say something like, if Clive in friends print ah, good, Clive is there, uh, then we might go else print I'm not friends with Clive. And in this instance, it should print out, I'm not friends with Clive, because Clive is not in the friends list. And there it goes, I'm not friends with Clive. So using this very simple in keyword, we can do uh, tests to see if items are in the lists. This is really useful if you're doing some kind of search on your list, uh, because maybe the user could type in a friend's name and we could test if that name is in the list. In fact, actually, we can do something like that right now. So, to give a good example of how we could use the if in combination um, to test if maybe someone we're searching for is in a list, let's write a little program. So the first line of my program here is going to say, is setting up my initial array. Uh, then we want to find out um, the search term we're looking for. So maybe we could have a variable called search friend equals input. Please enter the name of the person you are searching for. Now we need to construct the if statement to check if they are in the list or not. So we could say something like if search friend in friends. So if the value entered by the user, which is going to get stored as search friend, if that value is in friends, which is our list up here, 
If they are, then we want to print, uh, we can actually use the name of them, found search friend, something like that. Uh, but if they're not, we can say something like uh, could not find search friend. So let's have a go and see that running. So here we are. Uh, please enter the name of the person you're searching for. So we're going to search for uh, someone who is there, so maybe Claire. And it says found Claire. Let's run it again. And this time see if what happens if we put in a name that isn't there. So maybe this time we'll search for uh, Darren. And if we press enter, it should say, could not find Darren. And there you go. So that's how we can use the in keyword uh, along with searching for a term inside a list. Sometimes it's useful to know if our list has any items in it or how many items it has. Um, and we can do that by using the len function. This is a built-in function in Python and you can pass it uh, a value, which in this case is going to be the reference to our list, and it will return how many items are in the list. There we go. Uh, now this is useful because sometimes um, you might want to do something with your list differently if there are no items in your list compared to when there are items in your list. So in, in the case earlier where we printed out, I am friends with John, I am friends with Claire, I am friends with Sarah, um, if there were no items in our list, it might have been nice to just say, I have no friends. Uh, but in order to do that, we would have had to test to find out if the length of the friends list was zero or not. Uh, let's just give you a new, uh, a new example of this. Let's do empty list is equal to, there's nothing in there. And if I do len of empty list, it will give me zero as the result. So that's an empty list, it's got nothing in it, whereas friends has got four items in it. And again, I could do this in an if statement, something like if uh, length of friends is not equal to zero, then print I have some friends. And this should print I have some friends when I press enter again. I have some friends because obviously uh, the length of friends is four and I've said if the length of friends is not equal to zero, well, four is not equal to zero, print I have some friends, I have friends, lucky me.